So here we are on a Saturday. I'm going to make a carbon fiber plate. I have all the... Uh, I'm going to make it pretty because you can make a carbon fiber plate without just about putting anything down. Uh, but sandwiching it between two pieces of glass that has been treated with release agent uh, will make it look nice and shiny. It's going to be part of the hardware for a carbon fiber roof rack that I've made. A couple of things I've set up here. There are many different ways to skin this cap, but in particularly I like to elevate the glass plate above the table. Um, it sort of uh, prevents some of the epoxy from rolling on the bottom side and uh, collecting on the back side of the glass and now you've got to pry it off and, and sometimes the glass doesn't fare too well in that equation. So um, get your tools ready. It's up elevated and taped off so it does not roll in on the other side as well. It's been sitting in a heat lamp, 150 watt heat lamp, and you can see that it's about uh, oh just under 100 degrees. I'm using the HTE, which does need a post cure. This is going to be strong stuff because uh, it's going to hold my my $5,000 mountain bike um, um, <laughs> down on the roof at 80 mile an hour highway speed. So um, I got to make sure it's 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 uh, plenty strong. So anyway, the plan is to put down carbon fiber epoxy put the other lid on top of it and then squeeze out make it nice and pretty. So about 160, uh, 180 grams total of HTE has been degassed and you can see that it's uh, nice and bubbly free. Um, whether or not that's a must, that's, that's really your ticket. So anyway, start the equation by putting out the first layer of epoxy. Now the first time you put this out there will be a tendency for the epoxy to be thicker than it should be because of the viscosity and friction between the glass plate and the epoxy. Um, that's just the way it is. The subsequent, so what I'm trying to say is you're going to use quite a bit more epoxy on the first layer then everything gets saturated and the epoxy in the matrix or layup is resulting in a substantially less friction and thus less epoxy used on the sequential layers. Um, always important to put epoxy down first and then the carbon fiber and then you s mechanically squeeze the epoxy through the fibers rather than put the epoxy down first excuse me carbon fiber down first and then the epoxy. Uh, that way uh, you're doing it backwards and you will not fare as well. So anyway, here is the first layer and instead of just cut a bunch of layers of this stuff, I uh, had an awful lot of scrap laying around the house that uh, I had to get used for something. When you make multiple projects you will Inevitably, end up with a lot of, of scrap carbon that uh, uh, you don't have a, I should say, immediate use for. Uh, carbon is expensive, no, absolutely no reason, you just toss it. So, anyway, I'm going to start with a nice piece of carbon, like so. I personally spent probably a bit more time than the average carbonator massaging the resin out through. Uh, I just prefer that. I have a very good resin con to fiber control um, when I make structural projects that is an, uh, of the uh, utmost importance. So do you need to do that? No, probably not. If you're making something structurally that really uh, your life is dependent on, or in this case my uh, very dear to me 29er all mountain bike um, for sure, I'm going to make sure that I stay inside of uh, um, the ratios. What you will also see as you continue, it's kind of neat to have a little napkin laying around when you need to grab some other stuff. Um, it was 94 degrees before and you will see that already now it has risen to just about 100 degrees. And as this continues to soak up the heat and produce its own heat, uh, you will see that it will 
have a continuance of temperature rise. You can see that actually to the trained eye here you will notice or the trained eye probably noticed that I did not put any resin down between this layer and the other layer. If you did notice that, good eyes. The reason for that is the excess epoxy laid down on the first get-go. I'm trying to take advantage of that. The second layer down, you can see that there actually was enough carbon fiber, excuse me, epoxy on the carbon fiber from the first layer that is enough to saturate even the second layer. Oh, just an old trick that you don't necessarily have to do. If you feel better putting it down between each and every layer, that's fine too. I'm just trying to uh, utilize a 1 to 3 ratio. 3 by weight, that is. 3 times or 33% resin and 66% fiber. So here in front of me I have two complete pieces of carbon fiber that has been saturated. Check and look, everything looks good still. Oops, that was unintentional. So now you'll see that whatever next subsequent layers that uh, you put on of the epoxy due to that the less friction between the epoxy saturated layers of carbon fiber and the brush you don't have nearly as much of epoxy and you can feel the drag on the brush is less than with the first stroke here comes uh, the special part here. We're going to be doing double layers. So you might just have full sheets of uh, carbon fiber that you're putting out, which is just as fine. I just, uh, like I said, had an awful lot of scraps laying around that I wanted to get rid of. So. That's just uh, the reason that I am subbing different layers here. Um, I found that if you get into massaging the fibers down with your fingers rather than your brush to start with, you get a little bit more of the resin pressed through the fibers and you actually will have a very good resin to fiber control ratio. Um, again, multiple different ways to skin this particular cat. Um, so, whichever method that you prefer, I'm sure will be just as fine as well. I prefer to do the uh, perimeter first and then go inward. That way I myself tend to have less resin pooling towards the inside and you get something bulging that you have to squeeze back out. But again, several different ways to skin that cat. The important part is as you work yourself with each layer of carbon fiber on here, the important part is not to forget then each layer of carbon fiber goes down and another layer of epoxy goes down and you can see I don't know if the camera is picking it up but you can see that it actually is saturating you can see the satin sheen to it when you have pushed enough of the resin through of course you need to take great care not to disturb the layup because if you do that you're just kind of uh, defeating the purpose of making a strong layup. I 
I actually have no idea <laughs> how many layers totally of carbon fiber I have here. I just realized that. So working with high temperature we can cover a couple of other things here as we lay this up here. Working with the high temperature epoxy as well I find that it is extremely helpful if you have a heat lamp above your workstation you will find that uh, as the epoxy gets more exotic such as the Max HTE that I'm using here you will find that they get thicker as they get thicker they're a bit harder to work with unless you have a heat lamp sitting up constantly submerging or bombarding your workstation we're now at 101 almost 102 bombarding it with uh, uh, infrared heat rays this stuff tends to get worked up like a flask of syrup and then it becomes sort of hard to manage. Um, another thing here that you might have uh, realized if you've worked with this before is now wait a minute if I'm putting that many layers on top of each other down the middle right here what then happens with uh, that should be theoretically twice as thick yeah you're right it should be and uh, nothing I can do about that that's the the the, the reason or the way uh, when I use scrap carbon that's just the way that's gonna be but I then will simply flatten it more so than the exterior and that should bring everything to a level piece you obviously won't see that if you're not using scrap carbon but inevitably you stack a bunch of napkins they will uh, build up more than the surrounding um, areas and I can feel that so what I'm gonna do is trying to massage this a bit more and then the last piece of carbon coming on I can feel that as the HTE sits under the heat lamp here. One thing you need to be careful about when you start massaging your polymers with the, the addition of heat is it can run away with you very, very fast. So be careful of that. I just have a few, couple more that I'm going to stick those in there. And there. And when you feel that the carbon is about to set, you can feel that even with the addition of heat, it's starting to thick up as soon as you take it away from that heat application. That means it is time for you to wrap it up, because shortly thereafter, this thing is going to set, and wherever it sets, that's where you're going to be in that project. So. Looks like I did something right, just about a little bit more left for the last piece, which goes on the top here to make everything nice and pretty. Massaging a little bit more in the middle, like we talked, get a little bit more of the obviously ideal. You wanted to make the strongest piece you could, you should not use the 
sheets, but this is going to serve as a roof rack uh, hardware bolt onto a carbon fiber roof rack, so it really does not 